welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today we are kicking off a sewing project that I'm super excited about. This is gonna be from my more affordable series. First thing that I guess I probably should have double checked price of is this pattern. This pattern is really, really cute. It is like just, it's a pretty plain, like I don't wanna say t-shirt top, but t-shirt-esque top that has these really fun hip and butt ruffles on it that I think are so funny. When I saw this pattern, I just, I really wanted to make it up. We'll see how I actually actively feel about it once I'm wearing it, but I just thought it was so funny and had a potential to be really, really cute. So I am obviously making that ruffle version and I think I will likely just make the short sleeve version. I tend to feel pretty restricted in long sleeves and if I want long sleeves or like I'm cold or in general, I tend to just add on a sweater. So I think I'll probably stick to the short sleeve version. I'm pretty excited about this one. I think it should be a lot of fun. And for the fabric, this is some fabric I picked up recently at a buy the pound fabric sale. And let's see, where's my tag? And this one cost me $3 for four and a half yards. I guess I should check. Does this even work for this? Da, da, da. Yeah, this will be plenty of fabric. So we're in good shape there. It's also not a directional fabric, but I figured a rayon would be best for this because I feel like if you were to use something with like a lot of crispness to it, the ruffles probably wouldn't like lay the way I think they should. So that's why I'm going with this rayon. I'm super excited about this project. I, once I picked up this fabric, I was just really excited because this is like exactly the type of rayon I love to make into vintage patterns. But yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. I anticipate I'm gonna make need to make a little bit of an adjustment in the sleeve if that's the case. If that's the case, we'll jump into pattern adjusting, but if it's not the case, we will jump straight into cutting out the fabric. So I'm first going to kick this off by making the sleeve wider by, I think this was an inch and a half. This will just ensure a comfortable fit for myself. So I'm just slashing and I guess spreading. I'm doing that method, which you can find how to do it online. I am no expert and should not be teaching anyone. But in general, I have found this to be really, really helpful for widening up that sleeve to actually fit my bicep properly. And then here I am not the most happy. So I looked, I bought this pattern and it said it was complete. However, it only had the bodice pieces and the skirt ruffle pieces. It had none of the actual skirt panels. So I quickly went through my pattern stash and I grabbed another pattern that also had a six score panel skirt and decided to use that for my pattern. And I just did some measuring. So I made some adjustments in both the bust and the skirt pattern to make sure they would in theory match each other. These didn't work at the end of the day, but I got close enough, so it's okay. This is now the second pattern recently that has been sold as complete to me and has not been complete. So I'm feeling a little frustrated and I guess I probably need to be better about checking my patterns when I get them in. I just have always gone on trusting a seller if they mark something as complete as complete. And this one's particularly frustrating because it's really easy to tell that there weren't any skirt pieces in this pattern. A little frustrating, a little bit of a setback, a little bit of time wasted, but ultimately I still got to a full finished dress, so we're okay, but this was a little bit frustrating. And now I can cut out the pattern pieces. I am cutting these to have French seams, so you will see me cutting, I think I do four eighths of an inch down the side on all the side pieces where they'll sew together and have those French seams. So you'll see this on the bodice, on the skirts, on everything. We're trying to get everything all nice and French seamed. And here is your reminder that I do have a Patreon and a Ko-fi where you can sign up for monthly memberships. They are five to 5.50 a month and you get access to my videos on Monday instead of on Friday. My first step here is to do the darting. I am doing the back darts, which I have both a shoulder dart and a waist dart. And then I'll move to the front darts, which are a little bit more complex. So the front darts have this big slash because they're one of those angular darts that come in like diagonally so that way it covers what you would need in both a side dart like a side bust dart and then a waist bust dart so this does the work of both of them but as a result you have this kind of split of the fabric apart and the reason I think my skirt didn't turn out to match up with my bodice is because I didn't quite know how to scale this up to make that work like to make this piece I need it to be a quarter of an inch bigger to match the measurements of the skirt pattern that I stole. And I, I don't think I did this math correctly because this is just a more complex dart. But I did ultimately sew those darts up and, and because the dart is slashed all the way up, that is a unfinished seam. So to finish it, because it's rayon and it's gonna fray really badly and you don't want a lot of fraying on a dart, especially because that's a point of, I guess, pressure, I am gonna zigzag those seams closed and they should be finished well enough. And here you can see me pressing that dart. 
I pressed these down, the instructions weren't super clear, and then you can see me kind of trying to clean up the side where I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing. And now I've sewn up the side of my side seams, so I am now doing a French seam, so I'm trimming the excess fabric I have because I sewed them wrong sides together, and then I'll trim the seam and then I'll flip them over and press the seams open and then press them again so then we have right sides together and then also a seam again, and that just encases all of those messy thread bits Bits, especially again this is right on it frays really bad to the seam when I then go and sew that seam up again and now I'm gonna real quick sew up the back seam I intentionally cut the back seam so it was on the selvage edge so that way all the fringes fraggies, whateveries, don't get snatched in the zipper and become a whole big problem. And because this is going to zip up the back, once I baste those together and press them, I am then ripping out the stitches and I have that nice edge for when I go to sew my zipper in a long time from now. I like to focus on completing my bodice first, so here what I am doing is I am putting in the gathering stitches for the sleeves. In this one I am using the gathering method of stitching about 3 8 inch from the edge to get the seam gathered and then I'll ease it in because these seams are supposed to have no gathers or tucks. So that's the plan on this guy. And here you can see me pressing the French seam for the side sleeve seam. I guess is what you would call it. And then I sewed the side of the sleeve up and now I'm just doing the hem, first going around and doing a top stitch so that way I will have a finished edge when I press the hem. Here I am easing in the sleeve head. I am matching all of my notches. I have a notch up at the top to show where the shoulder seam goes. And then I have that double notch on the back side and the single notch on the front side of the sleeve to show you where those go. And then I'm just trying to ease this really, really carefully and get no puckers or tucks or anything like that. I've gotten so much better at this type of sleeve this year, it's really exciting. And then once I've sewn that anywhere I did get tucks, I am going to unpick and then I'm going to stitch it again after being even more careful in my easing. I usually don't get these right the first time when I do an eased sleeve, so if you can't get a no pucker sleeve, I super encourage take the time to unpick because when you have just like that inch segment to work with, you can often get the ease correct. And for the sleeve, I decided I wanted a tape instead of to finish it with a zigzag because I can find the zigzag to be a little irritating to my armpit. So I am stitching on that binding, trimming that extra seam allowance, and then folding over the tape and sewing it to have that seam again be completely finished. I'm now going to focus on the neck facings, and for the neck facings, I'm putting an inner facing to give it some structure. The instructions don't tell me to do this. Most of what I found, 1940s, 1950s patterns, do not tell you to interface the facings, but I can tell you it makes a huge difference structurally, especially with something like rayon. And then I'm going to pin up the shoulder seams on the facing, and then I'm folding over the edge again and giving myself a clean edge by just top stitching it. And then I stitched the facing in place, and here I am under stitching the facing so it will fold and roll really nicely along the neck and you won't see any bit of the facing peeking up. And now I'm working on these skirt panels, so I'm working on getting the front panel and the back panel made, everything except for that very, very center front panel. So I guess this is more accurately the side, the side front two back panels and then the, we're just doing, I guess this is technically an eight gore skirt. Um, we're just doing six so this is more of an eight gore skirt actually now that i'm talking about it i have eight panels here and again i'm just doing these french seam style and then here i'm now finally going to work on the ruffles i have already sewn most of these had three ruffle pieces to sew together or two ruffle pieces to sew together so i've already sewn up those seams and now i'm just finishing the bottom edge which i'll do a small double turn hem so here is my first turn of the double turn hem and then i want these to be super not bulky and have literally no body to them so i'm trimming out that extra fabric from that edge and Spooky has come to join me, so I'm just harassing her a little before doing the second turn of that double turn hem. So you can't see it because I focused you here on Spooky, but I promise that's a second turn that I am putting on that same seam. So that way the unfinished edges are completely not seeable. Spooky is having a deep need to be involved today. I don't know why she's so clingy. I haven't even really been traveling, but she's a clingy little baby. But here I am sewing up the back seam of those six skirt panels because they're actually going to have me put in 
the zippers before I put in the ruffles. And once I again press that seam open, I'm going to unpick the tiny bit of the seam that the zipper actually sits in. And then with close supervision, here I am again. I'm sewing in that zipper, leaving the top 5 eighths, which is the seam allowance I think on this pattern, non-sewn, but um, otherwise sewing this in. So this was actually really exciting for me to learn because if you've been around this channel a lot, you have seen me make these ruffled tiered skirts. I did one recently with a feather dress I've made. I've done it with linen dresses, done it with skirts, and I've never been quite sure how to get a zipper in when you're putting in ruffles and have it like all go correctly and not sew over the ruffles and not become just kind of a big frustrating mess. And this seems to be how you do it. So here they're having me put in the zipper just to the bottom half of the zipper before I put in any of the ruffles because then I can sew over. So this is brilliant. I was super happy to learn this method because this has always been something I've wondered how you do. So here I am pressing down that top edge of the ruffle. This eventually is gonna have gathering stitches in it, which I'll show you in a second but essentially this will keep the ugly part of the ruffle underneath the longer part of the ruffle as opposed to relying on the ruffle above it to hide any messy edges you get with this. And then with this, I'm laying out my ruffles to try to get an idea of where I need to mark my ruffles to go because again, I did not have all the pattern pieces that came with this. I didn't have any of the skirt. So therefore I didn't have any of the markings the skirt pattern would give me to show me exactly how to overlay these. So these, I'm just kind of taking a guess on how I think they will sit nicely and it turned out okay. And now I'm getting ready to sew on the ruffles. Basically I'm basting through two layers of fabric because this is essentially a turned seam. And this is the basting that I'm putting in for the ruffle itself. First, I have to unstick my fabric. Occasionally, rayon gets sucked down into the feeds with, if you're not careful with how you stop start your stitch, and that's what's happened here. But once I get that all sorted, you will now actually see me put in the basting stitches. And here I'm gonna do two rows like I normally do. I installed the first ruffle off camera to make sure it was all still making sense to me. Now I'm gonna install the other ruffle. So here I am marking that out really, really clearly with yellow chalk. And then I'm going to pin down that ruffle to exactly where it needs to be. It actually has a mark on where it hits certain seams so I can know exactly how to space the ruffle evenly. And then also that ruffle off camera. Now I'm at all three ruffles. I did that last ruffle off camera as well. And here is the important part and you can do this pattern on any basic like gourd pattern that you like because the only trick to this really is the placement of the ruffles, figuring out how long the ruffles are, and then you're just sewing the ruffles into that front seam of the skirt to give the front of the dress that like straight down look while the ruffles sit at the hips and around the butt. So here I am pinning it to the front gore and I'm doing a French seam again so they're wrong sides together first and to account for that I didn't have any gathers in the first inch of material here and it is now getting dark out so I have to stop sewing, but I just wanted to show you this is me pressing that seam down. Um, as you can see, the ruffles are well within the French seam. So tomorrow all I have to do is attach the bodice and hem the skirt. Alrighty, so for attaching the waist seam, this is where I figured out I did the incorrect math and I did just sew it in first and just tried my best to ease the front of the bodice to the front of the skirt. But like I said, my calculations were incorrect. But at least for this morning, I could not bear to admit to my mistake yet. So I went ahead and I finished the waist seam with rayon binding tape, just like I did the armholes. Trimming and doing the whole shebang because I was too stubborn to be stopped at this point in time. I am continuing with my madness with sewing in the zipper. You saw me sew in the zipper to the skirt part, and now I'm just sewing it all the way up now to the bodice. This worked because the skirt, zip, the zipper I chose was the correct size. You have to make sure your math is precise in this or you're gonna end up with a too long zipper, especially if you're using these metal zippers that are vintage, that it's just harder to cut them down later if you need to. And after putting in the zipper, I tried on the dress and I was horrified at the easing and the bagginess of the front of the bodice. It was looking so horrible. So I put the project down for a couple of days and then I unpicked the entire front of the skirt, binding and all, and am now going to get the measurements where they need to be. So I need to take a little bit 
back from the seam into the skirt so i need to make the skirt just i calculated three quarter inches bigger it's crazy how much three quarters of an inch will make a difference in sewing but this made such a difference so i drew a line to sew on and then i'm unpicking to make sure that everything in my french seam is seam is trimmed down enough that i can cut in that way without having little fringes poking out the seams and then once i've done all that i'm gonna go ahead and sew down that line and after that you guessed it more unpicking this is kind of a shame too because rayon does show when you've unpicked Picked, but I'm just gonna choose to live with it because I would rather see a few tiny little holes in my fabric than the ugliness that is the fit of this dress at its current state. I then re-eased in the entire skirt and then I refinished it and you will see it in the reveal but this was really well worth the probably hour and a half detour I took. I should have done this from the beginning and never finished this waist seam, but sometimes you have to see a mistake on your body to really decide that you have to correct it. If I had not corrected this mistake, I would have hated this dress. But now we can move on to hemming. Here I'm doing a quick top stitch at the edge, like I do with most of my hems, to give myself a nice, clean hem that has no weird fringes. And I also then ran in a line of basting stitches so I could then ease in the hem of this skirt because it is a rounded hem and I've tried non-basting methods. I've tried to just like kind of ease it by eye or ease it by using hem tape. None of them have worked nearly as well as doing this simple gathering stitch trick. And with that, I am just hand stitching that down. And now we are ready for the reveal. I can't wait to show you this dress. Alrighty, you have seen that reveal. I hope you enjoyed it. I went out to my favorite Dahlia farm to film it, and yeah, I really, really hope you enjoyed that reveal because it was a really bad traffic weekend, so what is usually a hour and a half drive took me two and a half hours to get up there. But I enjoyed my time. I got my Dahlia, as you can see them back there. It was worth it, uh, but it was a bit more of a trek than it usually is. But with that, we're gonna talk about our cost breakdown and my final thoughts on this project. So for the cost breakdown, this was one of my projects that my goal is to keep the budget under $50 for my supply costs and I more than beat that. So I spent $4 on fabric for this. This is fabric that I bought by the pound in a sale plus interfacing. So pretty cheap, really, really good price. And then for notions, this required a zipper, a label and thread. And I think that's it. This was not a notion happy project. So that put our notions at $5 and 90 cents. And the most expensive part of this was the pattern coming out at $14 and two cents. Guess I'm not that mad about it being incomplete for that price because this is usually kind of a specialty pattern. All that said, if you total this up, you have $23.92 for how much this cost me to make. I think that's fantastic. That more than beats fast fashion prices. I don't always display it well on this channel, but I do try to occasionally show you that if you sew your own garments, you can beat fast fashion and unethical labor practices in 
have clothing that fits you and looks really good and is much higher quality than what you would have spent on that fast fashion piece. So I do think this successfully accomplishes that, which I'm excited about. So we do talk about labor on this channel. I like to be transparent, first of all, with how long something like this takes me to make because it's really easy to see YouTubers or TikTokers make something and think, wow, that was so easy. So in these videos and in specifically this part, I like to try to really call out how long things take me to make. So this took me three hours to cut. I don't know why it took me so long to cut. Just kidding. I'm going to take that right back. It's because I had to refine and trace the pattern. And also cutting rayon just takes a little bit longer because it's so shifty. And then for the sewing, which is like on the machine and the ironing board, going back and forth between the two, that was seven hours and 30 minutes. And then I only spent 45 minutes hand sewing. I've been trying to hand sew very minimally on projects right now due to some stuff going on with my hands. So with that, we have a grand total of taking me 11 hours and 15 minutes to make, which is not too shabby. If I wasn't showing you guys the steps, I definitely could have made this much quicker. Generally these days off camera, I'm averaging anywhere between five and eight hours for a dress. I guess that's not, that's a really big range, but you can definitely make things faster. Me moving the cameras around and all of that takes time. And I do like to note, this is not a one for one comparison to what making something in a factory would be like, where you have people working on each steps and things are much more efficient than a home sewer. However, I want to talk about a living wage and our garment workers because our garment workers are often people in other countries and in this country here in the US as well too, who are being paid unlivable wages and often living in terrible conditions as well as working in terrible conditions. The abuse of these workers is something that happens and it really matters to me that we talk about it and we stop it because when we buy fast fashion, we're contributing to that system. And one of the reasons I started sewing originally was so that way I could stop participating in that system quite as much. With that said, I do set my price per hour at a living wage here in Seattle, which is $35.39. This is a living wage. I would even say you're only mildly okay with this wage. You're not living paycheck to paycheck, but you aren't saving a whole ton either. But with that, I'm going to multiply that $35.39 by 11 hours and 15 minutes. And with that, we get $398.14 of labor costs, which means for me to sell this dress and pay myself a living wage, as well as the supplies back, this is not adding in any profit. A lot of shops, especially, you know, those ultra fast fashions that we will not be naming, those are often marking things up 70 to 80%. So this would be no markup. This would be paying myself a living wage and the supplies total of $422.06. Hopefully that just like helps put things in perspective a little bit and make you think a little bit more about what it means if we're paying $25 for a garment. And that means that that includes all of the labor of the people who make the garment, the, also the people who make the fabric, the people who make all of the notions, the people who ship it and all of that. Like if that all has to be included in that $25 plus a 70 to 80% markup, we're not, we're not paying these people a living or any way ethical wage. The other thing I like to do on this channel is some comparisons. I wanted to prove in this case that I beat the fast fashion price. So again, my supply cost was $23.92. That is what I spent out of my own wallet to make this piece. Uh, and I went through and I found some pieces that were similar in the ultra fast fashion category which you know, these are companies like Timu and Shein. Nothing was very close in this category, but you know, they don't make dresses like this really anymore. But I did find a dress vaguely similar construction wise for $35 that was made of 100% polyester. Mine is made of rayon, which I'm not gonna go into the deep dive on why rayon is a problematic fabric, but rayon is actually not great either. <laughs> I do still think it's better than something with a fossil fuel like a polyester, but it is chemically really, really bad for the environment. And I think in the future, my plan is to not buy rayon new. For the mid-tier brand, this is your Anthropology, your Urban Outfitters, your and tailors just kind of like those mid-tier brands that usually you'll buy them on sale and they'll be a lot cheaper than the full price that I'm going to tell you. They're still a lot more expensive, even though often the conditions in their factories aren't any better than these ultra fast fashion companies. So I found something similar for $298 that was also made of 100% polyester. To give you more idea of when I'm looking at comparatives, it's really hard for me to find the exact same style because I'm using vintage patterns. So in this case, what I was looking for is I was looking for a six cord skirt with a top that had darts in it and had at least three ruffles attached somewhere to it. 
to try to get an equivalent look. So that's how these all looked is they were things that met those criteria. However, sometimes the ruffle was around the hem, sometimes there was ruffles on the bust. Like it just kind of really varied and this is just it's an imperfect methodology. I'm just trying to give you guys some cost comparisons and I'm looking specifically at manufacturing steps when I do that. And the last one I did find, I found a slow fashion brand that had a cotton dress for $328 that again matched some of the construction complications of this dress. I just want to say, again, mine cost $23.92, so I beat every single one of these, including the fast fashion. So I was able to do this and not participate in unethical practices. Even with the fabric, the fabric I bought secondhand, the zipper I brought, bought secondhand, the only thing I didn't buy secondhand is a thread and the interfacing. I was able to kind of take myself out of a lot of the unethical systems we have around. Also, I bought the fabric from a charity event. Overall, uh, I was able to make this cheaper out of my own pocket, have some money go to a good cause, and keep some stuff out of landfills, right? I do want to be clear, like I don't, I think it's really important we all act as ethical as we can, but you are no lesser of a person if you have limiting factors, right? Like we're all trying to get by in America. I just think we have to think a lot. Exploitation of people in other countries. Um, but with that, we are going to hop into the wrap up and looking at the dress itself. And here she is. I won't probably hold it up very long because the top is super boring. As far as construction, I'm pretty happy with this method. I'm really, really happy that I took the time to unpick the front waistband and um, move some of my seams to give me the actual proper, like non bunchy looking waistline. When I first sewed this for the first time, the waistline looked awful. So it was really worth the time to unpick that all and redo that all that work. And I'm much happier with how this turned out as a result. Uh, this was a good, a project that was a good reminder to me that sometimes it's worth it to put in that extra hour and a half to have something you actually love and will wear and I guess speaking of loving and wearing I love wearing this dress I have worn it I only wore it the full day that I did the reveal because it took me two and a half hours to get up there and then I filmed the reveal got my flowers and then it took me another hour and a half to get back home then I did wear it while I cut out some other projects and did some other things around the house so did get a full day's worth of wear and it was a very active day of wear and this was super comfortable this worked super super great for me I will say I I do think it's a smidge tight in the waist because it does that thing that it kind of like rolls up in bunches. That means that your measurements aren't quite right, but it's enough that, like I said, it's really, really comfortable for me. In the future, when I make this dress, I'm going to look at a slightly alternate neckline. I think a V here would be really nice or just, this is too humdrum covered up for me. This is, I guess, kind of too church lady for me as a top. So I think I would consider going sleeveless and maybe doing a slight V or something. I think that would be really pretty. With this skirt, yeah, this is this is just a little too buttoned up for me. But yeah, I'm getting to a point that most of the time I'm pretty happy with my work structurally or construction wise. I've gotten so much better about taking the time to go back and fix the parts of the construction that bothers me. Cause you know, I also took the time to like fully ease in the sleeve properly. So there's not a bunch of wrinkles and things like that. So all of that takes time and effort and patience but it's really really worth it in making a high quality garment and at the end of the day that's what I want to do is I want to not just make a garment but a high quality garment that will wash well will wear well and hopefully last for years and years and years and years to come even if one day it doesn't fit me when I go to resell it it will still be able to live a good life. But with that, I am going to wrap up this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully, as always, my content makes you think a little bit. We're getting down to the end of the year, which is wild to me. Transparently, I am filming this back in September. We are getting through the year. It's almost October, go into November, December, and that's pretty wild to me. With that, I do have lots of good stuff planned for the end of the year on this channel. I have two really, 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 really cool projects coming up, so definitely subscribe and stick around for those. And then as always, you can support my videos by giving me a thumbs up and commenting down below. And if you have the financial ability and desire, I do have a Ko-Fi and Patreon where you can go over and subscribe for monthly memberships and get access to my videos early. But with that, I I will see you next week with another fun video and two weeks from now with another sewing video. Bye!